Hi, Grade 7! Good morning! So, last quarter, we talked about the arts and crafts of the lowland and highland Luzon. So, for this quarter, we will going to um, focus on Unit 2, which is the arts and crafts of Mimaropa and the Visayas region. So, let's see what are the different cultures that they have and their products, crafts, and everything. So let's start. So before we proceed to the arts and the crafts of from Mimaropa, let's have some geographical backgrounds about this region. So Mimaropa, also known as Region 4B, is a region of the Philippines located in the Luzon. So as you can see in the Philippine map, inside the red circle, that is the part of the um, region. And also, this is composed of the provinces of the following. First, we have the Mindoro, which is divided into two provinces, the Oriental Mindoro and Occidental Mindoro. We also have the Marinduque, Romblon, and lastly is the Palawan. So this region is um, serves as the home of different indigenous and cultural groups, and each province has its own special arts and crafts that represent the unique characteristic or the unique culture of each province where they came from. So let's see. And now these are the um, topics that we will going to talk about the about the arts and the crafts from Mimaropa. So first we have the attire, fabric and tapestries. We also have arts and crafts, accessories and body ornaments, and lastly, we have the sculpture. Let's start with the attire fabrics and tapestries. So as the clothing of the, some tribes of the region of the Mimaropa, they have the same or the similarities with those uh, tribes that we talked about last, last week about the Highland Luzon. So let's see how similar those um, uh, clothing that they have to the Highland Luzon tribes. The first tribe from Mimaropa is called the Hanunuo Mangyan. So this tribe is from the province of Mendoro. So for uh, men, they wear um, loincloths or they call it the baag and they um, Partner it with a shirt called balukas. While for the women naman, they wear um, skirts and blouses that is called lambong. For the hanuno mangyan, their clothes is a cro cross-shaped embroidery design known as the pakudos. So we, whenever they um, weave their um, fabrics or these clothes, these symbols or design is always uh, present with their designs. Pakudos is a um, traditional design that they use in their blouses and it is believed to ward off evil spirits. And it is incorporated in the design of the clothing, accessories, and their blankets. So for Hanuno Mangyan, they also have the, um, the Harablon. So it is a handloom from the tribe. So ayan yung example ng Harablon nila. So this is uh, made from the raw materials of cultivated cotton trees so as you can see with the, the, the design the um, pakudos is always present another one another one for hanuno mangyan 
They also have the ramit fabric. So it is used in making skirts and blankets for or the carrying of infants. So that is an example of the ramit fabric and how do they use it um, for carrying the infants. So usually the ramit fabric is designed with purple or indigo dye and possesses an intricate set of geometric design. So um, as well as with the ramit fabric, they also used the design of pakudos. So on, um, in Hanunong Mangyan, they call uh, habilan the process of weaving of their um, ramit fabrics. So let's watch how do they do their um, bracelets and their ramit fabrics in this video. Hanuno. Dito sa kabundukan ng Mansalay, naninirahan ng ilan sa mga Hanuno. Isa lamang ang grupo ng Hanuno ng mga mangyan na matatagpuan sa Mindoro. Simple pamumuhay pa rin ang makikita sa komunidad nila. Palagi nagsisimula ang kanilang araw sa paghigop ng mainta kape. Pagkatapos ay gagawa sila ng kanya-kanyang trabaho o aktibidad. Para sa mga kababaihan, ang paggawa ng mga palumuti gamit ang makukulay na beads ang isa rito. Isa si Bayi o anti-eping sa mga mangyan na hindi lang gumagawa ng palumuti kundi nagtuturo rin sa mga batang mangyan. Isa rin kasi siyang guro. Iba't ibang klase ng palumuti ang nagagawa nila. Na minsay pinagbibili na rin nila. Tradisyonal na paraan pa rin ng paghahabi ang ginagawa ni Bayi Eping. So that is how they make their different crafts or their fabric. So using weaving pa rin. So next we have the Tagbanwa, which is a tribe from Palawan. So these are the people of the Tagbanwa. So for their clothing, for the men, they also... Um, wear the g-string or the loin cloths and usually this is supported with uh, ambalad so ambalad is a waistband made of wooden rattan and for um, women naman they wear wrap around skirts made of tree bark so an example is that and since most of the tribes in Palawan are not familiar with the common back loom weaving, they have used the inner tree bark for their clothing. So, hindi pag sila ganon kagaling sa pag weave That's why yung um, tree bark yung ginamit nila for their clothing. For the next um, topic, we have the arts and the crafts of the Mimaropa. So first, let's talk about the basketry and woven crafts. So in Mindoro, they have the call bayong, which is a bag usually made of buri or palm leaf and nito or the black fern. So as I've mentioned earlier, they, also, they use these pakodos in their um, crafts as well as sa mga clothings, sa mga baskets, bracelets, necklace for them to ward off the evil spirits. So lahat halos ng mga gamit nila have this design. They also have the buon buon or this is a small container made of buri and nito strips woven together. So um, they, ito naman, eh, they used to store um, small items for them to keep. So the 
Buon-buon is also used in storing battle shoes, ingredients, and different accessories. And we also observe the design of the pakudos. So, in Palawan naman, they have this called tingkop, which is, it is a harvest basket made of hard strip bamboo. So, that is the tingkop. Aside from that, they also um, do a cone-shaped strainer type basket for their funnel. And another basket of the tagbanwas are is the bayong bayong so it is a soft rice basket with square bases and round tops so para mas madaling ma-access or makakuha ng rice na gagamitin nila for that day so um, this basket from the tagbanwas has a various purpose kaya nila ginagawa so maybe pang store ng mga food for their harvest and for uh, help na rin for their uh, daily living. So next we have the Moriones mask from Marinduque. So like other parts of the country, the Mimaropa region has several uh, festival that is widely observed and commonly related to the practice of the religious beliefs of the people. So in Marinduque, the Moriones Mass showcase during the Moriones Festival attract um, people and different um, tourists in different places to come in this um, festival. So Moriones Mass, uh, this is made of wood in which an imagined face of Roman or Syrian soldier is carved. So this is an example of a Moriones Mass. So, these masks are painted with bright colored paints and also this mask bring life to the festival which depicts the story of Longinus, a Roman soldier converted to uh, Christianity. So, whenever this festival is on uh, in Marinduque, they all wear this type of uh, mask to celebrate the uh, Moriones Festival. Another craft that is found in Mimaropa is the Manunggul Jar in Palawan. So during pre-colonial times, um, there has been an evidences that we Filipinos have already making crafts as part of our cultures and tradition. So, in 1960s, this manunggul jar was discovered in a Tabon cave in Palawan. So, this manunggul jar is an ancient burial jar dated back to Neolithic period. So, when we say Neolithic period, this is the um, period wherein the people already use different tools to support their daily living. So, it like the baskets, the pots that helps them in their daily lives. And also, it is made of clay with two seated figures on a boat at the top of the top cover. So, the front figure which has its arms crossed above its chest, um, it symbolizes the disease, disease person or yung namatay na. So, uh, sinabi nga na this is a burial jar wherein um, uh, hinahatid yung kaluluwa mo sa kabilang buhay. So, what I've said earlier, the um, front figure which has its cross arms above his chest is yung namatay na tao. While the second figure um, holding a steering paddle signifies the boatman that takes the soul of the dead to the afterlife. So, that is the purpose of the two um, seated person at the top of the burial jar in a boat. While the design or the wave-like pattern around the upper portion of its cover represent the body of water 
where the boat is traveling. So the discovery of this manunggul jar is considered as one of the greatest discoveries in the Philippines that gives evidence to the country's pre-colonial uh, culture. So if you um, will observe the money, uh, uh, the 1,000 peso bill, you will see the manunggul jar at the back of um, the said bill. Another one is the Hanuno Mangyan writing script. So, um, the, before the arrival of the Spaniards, the ancestral Filipinos or the first Filipinos had already developed their own system of writing. So, for instance, the Hanuno people of Mindoro have their syllabic writing that has existed since the pre-colonial times. And this um, system of writing is composed of uh, 48 symbols. So, bawat isa dyan is representing a certain syllable. So, it is commonly used. So, this um, writing script is commonly used to write love songs and poems that is called ambahan. So, ambahan, they usually um, uh, write it in a bamboo. So, the ambahan is, uh, they describe it, the scripts on bamboo using knives. So, dahil they don't have paper pa, hindi pa na-discover yung paper that time, they use ba the bamboo to write on their um, uh, love songs and different poems. So now let's have the accessories and body ornaments. So the uh, people of Mimaropa or the indigenous groups from this region always match their clothes with various traditional body ornaments and accessories. So let's see the different accessories that they have that uh, we will see in their part of their culture. So first, the Hanuno Mangyan of Mendoro wear their hangkos or it is a belt made from woven rattan with packets. And they also wear bracelets and necklaces made of beads. So usually, if their, um, their clothes is red, the necklace is also uh, dominated by red. Also, the uh, bracelets. Next is the Tagbanwa tribe from Palawan. So this tribe uses ornamental plugs called uh, Balintatao. So this is designed with mother of pearls arranged in geometrical patterns. So I don't have picture, hindi ko kasi um, wala akong mahanap online. But as we described it, um, it is made of mother of pearls in geometric patterns and they also wear wooden bracelets and necklaces made made of beads so usually um gumagamit din sila ng copper and brass wires for this and for the anklets and like the tribes of highland luzon they also blacken their teeth so the Teeth blackening is usually done during puberty and this is primarily done to preserve the teeth into old age. So, nagpe-prevent siya ng tooth decay uh, para sa uh, mas lalong tumibay yung teeth nila sa pagtanda. In the region of Mimaropa, long hair is observed among men and women. So, in the Hanunu tribe, men tie their hair with panyo or the uh, cloth hair, hair bands, while women use beaded hair bands to 
prevent their hair on falling in their face. And the people of Tagbanwa also let their hair grow long in which they use the wooden comb for um, grooming their hairs. And also we have the sculpture. So the sculpture in the tribes of Mimaropa play an important role in their respective cultures and tradition. So let's see why it is very important to the tribes of the Mimaropa region. So the Tagbanwa tribe in Palawan, they carve sculpture of animals as part of their ritual offerings. So some of these example sculptures are the Mamanuk or the ro rooster, the Kiruman or the turtle, Karaga or the native bird, and we also have the Dugyan, the small ground animal, lizards and wild pigs. So the Tagbanwa people believe that these sculptures help attract the deities or the goddesses gods and goddesses and spirit relatives in the uh, Pagdiwata rituals to help them um, in their daily lives. So it is a form of religious acts or religious beliefs that wa that's why they do this um, sculpture of the animals. So sculptures is usually made of wood but in Romblon they make um, sculptures using the marbles. So that's why uh, Romblon is considered as the marble capital of the Philippines. So they make marble sculptures of different objects and figures, mainly for commercial purposes. So ginagawa nila ito para ibenta sa mga tao. And they also have um, a wide uh, source of um, marbles. So that's it for today, grade 7. Thank you for listening. So next week, we will going to talk about naman, the arts and crafts of Visayas. So make sure you will answer the drill that I will um, attach in this lesson package for us to know if you really understand our lesson. So thank you again for listening, grade 7. Have a nice day and God bless. Bye!